Hi folks, so it's been a while since I put a video up on this channel and uh, for the most part that's largely down to the fact that I have been prioritizing content for the Fediverse, so Mastodon and uh, Peertube and even a little bit that's going to be going up on my website chrisware.wales uh, later on. Um, there'll be links maybe about on the YouTube channel, perhaps on the channel page or down in the uh, description below. But I gotta be honest, these days it kind of feels like YouTube's dying a little bit. Like it seems to really be much more interested in, shall we say, the Mr. Beasts of the platform and the, the more like what you call mainstream creators. And it is the mainstreamification of YouTube. There's um, no two ways about it. It's part of the reason why you see YouTube on all of the smart TVs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, it all ties in with everything being advertiser friendly and this channel doesn't run ads, so YouTube doesn't care about it. Um, which is fine. YouTube's a private business. It's none of my business how it, how it runs. Um, but yeah, when, when it comes to content that's in the stride that I make it, it does tend to feel more at home in more community places like Mastodon, Peertube, and on, you know, self-hosted websites like my one. Um, so I guess that's where I kind of, like, that's where my heart is right now. But I haven't forgot about you guys, so I thought I might just make a video today, have a bit of a catch-up. But do you guys kind of feel the same? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you watch as much YouTube as you used to? I tend not to. Um, I still do, and it's still, I guess, what you'd call my primary source of, of, of content in a lot of ways. I noticed Linux Lounge... Uh, has decided to drift away from from watching YouTube and um, and I think I have in a kind of a natural way uh, in a way that it's just like a lot of the content creators that I used to enjoy watching just they just don't make content anymore they've just moved on to other stuff they've drifted away um, and I think in, in, when it comes to YouTube that's a, almost like a natural thing that fits into the algorithm like I think no channel is is ever going to carry on forever a lot of channels seem to have like a natural five-year lifespan or something where they hit that peak and and then it sort of uh trails off um and it just seems to be the way that it it works like a channel seems to have a purpose something to say and then uh you know once the gist of the the spirit of the channel has has been presented then people move on or even the creator moves on or even the algorithm moves on uh, and it just seems to be you know like waves in the ocean um which is fine, and that's the way it all seems to go. I have given some consideration to having a whole new channel dedicated entirely to free and open source gaming. Um, so it wouldn't and, and have anything to do really with this channel, but it would just focus on, you know, the gaming space. Because, you know, even though I don't play as many video games as I used to, um, I've really come to appreciate a lot of what's going on in the free and open source uh, gaming world. Um, and it seems to be... Uh, a step away of all of the problems that you see in, in particularly AAA gaming, but also in, you know, like the smaller uh, indie studios in the gaming world, because it just seems to be so sort of uh, profit driven um, and and so, you know, sort of politicized within that business world that the actual craft itself, the artistic side of a video game seems to be lost. And I think that that's um, in abundance with free and open source gaming, um, and, and you know you're not going to get loot crates or pay to win or any of that kind of stuff in free and open source gaming um, and there are some really good even newer games that, that are free and open source not to mention good stuff that comes out of game jams and if you are a slightly more I don't want to say casual gamer but you know that's what I seem to be these days then you know you've got a plethora of games in the free and open source world that you don't have to pay for that you can install and uninstall on you know as as and when you wish and um that there's a a community of people behind them that that actually sort of care about them in a way that just doesn't um come down to it being a day job i think there's a lot to be said for that um but that uh being said that's not the reason i'm here talking to you today despite the fact that it took me four minutes four minutes to get to the point not even long for the, for one of my videos but um anyway share your thoughts if you think that would be something that you may or may not be interested in the chances are many of you won't be interested in and hence why it's going on a different channel but also because um it often seems like when a channel has a, a focus it seems to get not necessarily should we say more viewers and subscribers but the people that seek it out find what they want and stick with it whereas a channel like this one that sort of scatters around the uh, broader free and open source space does tend to sort of uh, I don't know, uh, ha have less of a solid direction, despite the fact that phew, men, like 10 years ago, this channel was way more general than, than now. Now it only, you know, it does seem to talk about free and open source software. Used to, it used to talk about all kinds of stuff. Then it used to talk about, um, 
just sort of software and technology in general with a little bit of gaming thrown in, thrown in and now it's just basically free and open source stuff because I guess that's the kind of thing I feel is most worth talking about. Anyway, the thing that came up on my Mastodon timeline that made me, uh, sort, sort of prompted me to make this video is this, it was on 9to5 Linux, it's also available on the Linux Mint uh, blog and all that kind of stuff but this is the one that sort of grabbed my attention Linux Mint 21 Vanessa will be based on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS new upgrade tool in the works I'll be honest, this is not the most exciting of press releases that I have read even today Linux Mint is not an exciting release, <laughs> that's one of the reasons it is so widely adored because you know where you stand with it I like Linux Mint because I consider it a decorporatized version of Ubuntu, similar to what you might think of LibreWolf to Firefox, I see as Linux Mint to Ubuntu and Canonical. Now, uh, Ubuntu and Canonical, they've done a lot for the Linux world. I have my criticism of them, but in all fairness, I have much more in the way of, of praise for what they've done. Ubuntu were one of the first distributions that ever made me feel like Linux was my primary operating system, and for that, I can never thank them enough. That being said, they've made some doozies in the recent years, and I think that, um, and and that's not necessarily uh, too much of a problem because of the model of open source uh, withstands all of those narrow-minded ambitions of corporations, in theory, and a lot of the times, you know, in practice. Uh, so case in point, of course, is that you take a look at Canonical, you take a look at, at, at Ubuntu, you take a look at their website where they never mention that they're based on Linux, and you, they actually never, you know, they, they they mention the corporate partners that they are with, you know, your Amazons and all, all the other big uh, you know, corporations. Um, they are a business, they're there to make money, and whereas they can do some good for the broader world and the broader community, we have to understand that as a corporate machine their job is to centralize wealth for their shareholders it's as simple as that um, love it hate it but it is just a fact of life that being said though they have contributed a lot of source code a lot of it upstream to debian now where am i going with this i have said it before and i'm going to reiterate the point today i seriously think that linux mint should drop their ubuntu based distribution in favor of their debian based one um because, for a few reasons. The first is Snaps. Now, Snaps, we all have know how... Oh, okay, Snaps, they are fundamentally kind of like a, an app store for Ubuntu. They do work, in my opinion, reasonably well cross-platform, but other people will give you different uh, anecdotes on that. But the trouble is, of course, is that it has a proprietary backend, so it's not really necessary, should we say, fitting within the free and open source culture and also it's very centralized so whereas uh, a distribution software repository will be um, you know mirrored on countless servers snaps is centralized it probably there probably is some mirroring done on the back end but in reality it's centralized under the stewardship of canonical so similar to what you might expect with steam or itch or the google play store or the mac store um, and all of that kind of stuff, like it's centralized. And this isn't something that I necessarily mind, but it is a problem when it starts becoming an integrated part of the system that becomes unavoidable. More and more packages are becoming snaps by default, sometimes because it's easier to package, sometimes it's because, or maybe it's because it gives Canonical a greater control over the uh, the operating system. Um, but it isn't something that other distributions do. So I don't mind when a package is released as a snap, you download that snap and then you can use it. But when it becomes a part of your integrated operating system where you, in practice, don't really have a choice. There have been cases, for example, uh, with Chromium in Ubuntu. If you do apt install Chromium, it will then pull down the snap. So you think you're installing the apt, um, you know, DPKG package of it, when in reality, you're actually just doing the snap. So you've put in one command thinking it's doing something and then it's taken a different direction and then gone and done something else. That was the straw that broke the camel's back with Linux Mint and that's one of the reasons why they basically disabled snaps outright. Uh, it's something that I felt was a wise move on their part, but also it makes me think that is their part their partnership, is, the, is Linux Mint being based on Ubuntu um, now sort of, you know, like is the end in sight 
because I can only see a situation so thus far within the current paradigm of Ubuntu and Canonical going more and more down the snap route. It gives them more control and it gives their, the company Canonical more of a intellectual property portfolio to then sell to shareholders and investors and on, you know other business partners. So it could very well be the case that such a time comes when distributions can no longer realistically base themselves on Ubuntu without becoming part of the canonical corporate infrastructure and I think that can be a problem not just of course for Linux Mint but it could be for like Pop! OS and Elementary uh, and other Ubuntu based uh, distributions of which there are quite a few. I have run Linux Mint Debian Edition on this machine before it's not the current version which is based on the latest version of Debian but the one before it I think it's like LMDE4 I want to say but uh, you know um, it's all numbers at the end of the day. It's, it was the latest one like last year. And uh, I ran it for a good long time, longer than I ever planned on, on, on running it because it was rock solid stable and it had really good like out of the box defaults, which I think are generally important if you are a casual uh, computer user in general. If you don't want to spend a lot of time uh, configuring your computer, Linux Mint Debian Edition is the best of both worlds. You've got the great foundation of Debian and then you've got some nice out of the box uh, smooth uh, defaults that's great there was nothing I couldn't do on that distribution uh, that the flagship Ubuntu based Linux Mint could it was very much as simple as that I don't think it really takes that much work I think if they put all of their current resources that they've got into their Ubuntu based one into the Debian based one I don't think I don't honestly I can't see a situation where I where I where the end user would even notice and I'm, I, you know, maybe someone on a Linux Mint team will set me straight on that. Maybe I will be corrected. But I genuinely believe that if not soon, well, if not now, then soon is it would be a perfect time to just ditch ditch Ubuntu. And I say that with a lot of love for Ubuntu in my heart. But um, Debian almost seems like a distribution designed for other distributions to be based on top of it. Debian is a great foundation. I'm currently running just raw Debian XFCE on this machine here right now zero issues because of course l very incredibly low maintenance yes some of the packages they're not so old at the moment but you know over the course of uh, a Debian uh, distributions life cycle um, things can get a little bit on the older side some people don't mind that some people like don't want to upgrade uh, that often and they're kind of happy just rolling with it provi and, and just having the security updates and I think I'm one of those people if, if my computer can do the job that I want it to do that's great. If you want something that's a bit more cutting edge, you got Arch, you got Manjaro, you got Fedora, plenty of distributions that have that have the newer thing. If you want something low maintenance, easy, slow. I I run XFCE as a desktop environment. I love it. It's great. It's brilliant. I'm not into fast moving computers anymore. Low fi, low fidelity. That's what I'm all about these days. A bit more of a humbler lifestyle, as it were. Uh, living off the land and all that kind of stuff. You know, um, easy, low maintenance, bit more of a control. You know, I'm sure that there is like an equivalent in in with with cars, right? You know, like 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 uh, Debian is your your trusty old pickup truck with the manual gear shift, and you can fix it yourself. You know, you 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 can you know change all the bits and pieces. I don't know cars that well, do I? Um, my car that I drive at the moment is a small hatchback, very simple, uh, easy to, to actually sort of like maintain to a degree as far as like somewhat modern cars go. It's quite old, it's been on the road since 09, it's great. Um, yeah, and, and it's and manual as well. Uh, in, in the UK, basically almost everyone drives a manual shift, but apparently in America it's like kind of a novelty or something that cars people like to do. Um, which is yeah interesting change of, of culture. Honestly, I don't actually know why in the UK everyone sticks with manual. Some people say it's because it's better fuel efficiency. We've got higher fuel prices here in the UK, I believe. Uh, but then where aren't they high these days? Am I right? And um, uh, and and maybe it's simpler. Maybe it's cheaper. Um, I know that gives you a little bit more control over the vehicle, but. Um, but sometimes I borrow uh, a an automatic, and they are just so easy to drive in it. Anyway. I'm rambling, but let's be honest, that's why you came to this video. So, um, yeah, Debian is a great distribution, in, in my opinion. One of the greats, right? Great for servers, uh, great for desktops. 
Uh, great for low maintenance and low fidelity stuff. It is absolutely fantastic. Not a complaint in the world. I run it. It's easy. It is great. But it is difficult to set up. You do need to know some mildly technical terms. Um, mildly technical. Like you need to know some of the basics of how a Linux distribution is put together and all the basics there. Uh, with Linux Mint, you don't. It will ask you the basics of questions and then it will send you through. And And here's the thing. Uh, I've been using uh, Mac a fair bit in, in my professional life, and I know people that have been using uh, Windows, who use Windows. Uh, I use Android on, on my phone, and I think I might know someone who's got an iOS somewhere, but that's not really factored into this. Um, I think that there is a very important space for, for Linux distributions in this world, because as time goes by, both Windows and Mac are becoming like always online operating systems. Like the very core of their operating system is online. They're a window into the internet, um, which means that you need to sign up to the terms and conditions of Microsoft or the con terms and conditions of Apple or the terms and conditions of Google. Although for some reason, or even on my reasonably new Android phone, don't actually need a Google account to run it. If you wanted to, you could bypass the Google sign in, install F-Droid, and away you go. So interesting that actually it's the Google operating system that seems to be o more okay with you, you not logging into the Google services. Maybe that's due to European le legislation, and I know that European Union legislation is coming down on Apple lately uh, because of their, um, uh, should we say, overly tight grip on their uh, app stores. But um, that being said, it seems that if you want a computer that can operate, like if you live in an area where there's not a great internet connection or uh, you, you are not an always online kind of person, uh, or you worry that we are becoming too dependent on a corporate internet and that everything we have just seems to be a window into it. Um, Linux is is basically the only workable operating system that, that fills that market now with Windows 11 and with the, with the newer versions of Mac. Um, it's, I think it's important. I think it's getting to the stage now where Linux is just not a convenient choice. It is a necessity. It is important. I've heard uh, people in government actually talk about the necessity to actually have an opt out of this massive corporate uh, infrastructure um, because, you know, we, we shouldn't have to be at the whim of these incredibly powerful corporations, more powerful than governments in a lot of cases, um, in most cases, as it were. So, you know, what do? You need at least something that can actually... You just need an alternative. You need something that can get away from it. And I think Linux offer, offers offers that, but you can't expect everyone to use it um, to to be super technical, you know, to, to even be that technically literate. They're going to be normal people. I know normal people. The people that I have put onto Linux, not because I've pushed it on them, but because they have asked me. They have all done so because they do not like this cloud, always online, super surveillance stuff. They don't like it. Right, they want something. They want the computers that they used to use back in like the '90s or at the early aughts. That's what they want, and Linux is the best best path for them in that. Not necessarily in terms of UI or design or functionality, but rather they just don't want everything on the internet all the time. Like it's just it's just not great for them, um, and it is worrying. And it does seem that like always being on the internet all the time, living your life through a, a corporate web browser of which you can choose between Firefox. WebKit, Safari, or Chrome, Blink, you know, like, these are the only options you're ever going to have. Um, yeah, like, we've got to fight back. We've got to fight back. There's no doubt about it. Um, and fighting back means building better. And I think that, like, Linux Mint does this. I think Debian does this. I think all of the, the, the non-corporate Linux, and even some of the corporate ones, like, Fedora's great as well, you know? You, you know, Canonical and Ubuntu ain't terrible, but... To be honest, I think if anyone's going to sell their Linux soul to the devil, it's going to be them. Got Seuss. Sometimes you guys call me out for not, not giving Seuss the love that it deserves. That's true. I have. It's been a long time since I was on Seuss, and Seuss was my first Linux distribution. It's the one that got me on. So, yeah, shame on me. It's okay. <laughs> um, so there. I think, I think, to be honest, strengthening the... Uh, the, the philosophical and ideological foundations of the Linux community at large um, can be done quite well if, if Linux Mint does decide to use Debian as its uh, base model. That being said, you can still pick it up on the website, easy as anything else. It's great to run. Um, and even though it's not their flagship version, 
it works every bit as well as I'd want it to and it's definitely worth checking out so um, yeah just to reiterate the thing at the beginning of the video that I said check out me on the Fediverse Mastodon Peertube links will be on the at least the channel page if not in the description and um, yeah check out my website as well so that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome toodaloo